So good evening. I was out behind the Ecclesia taking a walk and I am heavy under the anointing of the Holy Spirit right now. And um, so I wanted to hop on here and just speak a word about deliverance and pray for some people that might need deliverance. If you're watching for the first time, my name is Emily Rose. Um, the founder of Emily Rose Lewis Ministries and Kingdom Living Ecclesia and Academy here in Herndon, Virginia. And um, I came in today. To, well, we, we did an outreach today. We had a luncheon and like an Easter luncheon and gave away Easter bags to some kids. It was a really good time. And um, oh, Jesus, let me just open in prayer while some people are hopping on, Lord. God, I just bless your holy name. Lord, I thank you and I praise you. You are worthy to receive all glory and honor and praise. Lord, I pray that in this moment while I'm on here, that the people that are hearing this, the people that are under the sound of my voice would receive an impartation of faith. And Lord, that there would be people that would get delivered from things that they have been struggling under. Um, things that have been binding them. Lord, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that your power would fall in a mighty way. Your presence would be tangible to those that are listening. And um, Lord, that those that need to hear this would hear this in the mighty name of Jesus. So I'm going to talk about deliverance. <clears throat> so, you know, I like to kind of cover people that I'm praying for and it's kind of a hard ba boundary and to know what to share in order to encourage others and we overcome by the word of our testimony and the blood of the lamb and so um oh lord I'm really the anointing is just so strong on me right now so we had a powerful day with this outreach here um one of the guys came I think I'd post about him. I let the Lord baptize him in the parking lot last week. He came and brought somebody else. This guy's on dialysis and he's homeless. He has a car, but he did not have a battery for his car. And um, he's on the kidney waiting list. And, you know, none of the organizations around here will buy him a battery for his car. And they have somebody coming to pick him up. Um, for his dialysis and they were telling me that there was like three days in a row that they three days in a uh, three times in a row which he goes like three times a week so he didn't get to dialysis for a whole week because they didn't come and pick him up he doesn't have a battery scar and you know we were able to help him out thanks for all who gave towards that outreach we we helped several people but I personally went and got them a battery and helped them put it in their car I mean it was there with them getting out of the car and stuff um but anyway, so it was a really powerful day, and um, a while back, and I don't know if this is the same person, um, like this is a year ago or something, um, I was pulling into the Ecclesia, and I saw like a raging guy yelling at cars um, out here, and he started walking towards where the Ecclesia was. I saw him out here River Mare, and I came, and I'm just like, I'm sitting in my car, because I feel the Holy Spirit's wanting me to I didn't know what the Holy Spirit wanted me to do but I felt like I wasn't supposed to just turn from this situation it seemed like it's right in my face and so I actually got out of the car she was coming behind the, my car through the parking lot and I said is there anything I can do to help you and he was like he turned and there was like I wasn't able to connect with him at all it was completely he was completely demonized and taken over by this demon and um wasn't that far from me like maybe from here to the other side of that creek I don't know if y'all can see it and I just was looking at him I'm like I love you and he said I can't even remember exactly what he said he, he threatened me and I said I love you and he kind of started to walk towards me threatening me and pulled back his fist he was like I was at the door of the car and he was at the end of the car and at that point I just realized I needed to back off. <laughs> he 
he he wasn't want to hear it. He wasn't wanting to receive from me. And so I said, hey, you know, you can go ahead and go on. You know, I'm just just kind of put my hands up like and surrender. And he like tore off down the trail here because there's a trail behind. Um, I'm sorry. Um, there's a trail here that I'm walking on behind the building. Well, today, coming back from dropping my husband off to put my daughter, I put her down, came back in to prepare for the sermon tomorrow, and there's, I didn't know if it was the same person, but it was someone who was demonized. I think it was the same guy. I still think it was the same guy. And he, this was like a year, a year has passed, but he was raging, coming across the street raging at the person in the car. He was clearly demonized, just, you know, like, the people were just sitting there at the light, you know. And so I was sitting behind them and he crosses over and I like roll down my window and I'm like, hey, I love you. Because <laughs> you know? I just, so. and um, he like turned around and, you know, I can't even remember exactly what it was he said to me, but I said, Jesus loves you. And he was like, what's your problem? I think that's what it was. What's your problem? You know, like total rage, total rage. And I said, Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. And he said, I'll, ask, I'll find that out from Jesus for myself or something like that. And so he was going in the direction I was going. I turned, turned in the parking lot. And I had gotten money out of the bank to give to people that in need that came to the outreach. And I had $100 in my pocket, which is what I had assigned that I didn't give because I was going to buy this guy this $200 battery with my credit card. So I was giving $100 more than I had budgeted, but then I had this $100 cash left over because I ended up using, they told me it was going to be $100 and it was $230. So I used my credit card. But I had that money, and so I pulled over and I said, Hey, I love you. Can you come here for a minute? And I want, I want to show you that I love you. I have something to give you. And he, he was really kind of hesitant, like very hesitant. And I'm like just come here for a second. <laughs> and so he kind of came over and I'm like, you know, I love you. Jesus loves you. I just want to give you some money. It seems like you might be having a bad day. And are you hungry? Anyway, he's at the Ecclesia right now, slain in the spirit, laying out in the prayer room. <laughs> like he came back. I, f I fed him. It was like, I saw him, like the spirit, the, the spirits that were on him just hid. And at that point when he decided to come with me and he asked for deliverance. He asked for prayer. He says he's had asked, somebody has prayed for him for deliverance before and he didn't feel like he got deliverance. So I, I prayed for him. We prayed for a long time. The Spirit of God was so thick. And um, he was speaking in tongues and he just kind of got slain in the Spirit. So I came for a walk. <laughs> but here's what I was thinking. And because that, that prayer room is like an open heaven right now. We've done so much ministry and so much prayer in there. But I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, a lot of Christians don't think they can have demons. This guy had ha has had a salvation experience before. And a lot of Christians just don't think they can have demons. And so they live under oppression. And... Christians can have demons. I don't believe that demons can get into your spirit, but they can get into your soul and they can get into your body and attach to your body. They can inject thoughts in your mind. They can mess with your emotions. They can oppress you and um, get in your flesh. I don't think they can totally take you over. If you are Christian, you can like that guy kind of snapped out of it when he decided to, or when I showed up, but, um, if you look at Matthew 15, um, Jesus was with his disciples and a Canaanite woman came um, to him and she said, Lord, please help me. Hello, Nagam. How you doing? <laughs> we missed you today. I know you got to work. But um, so it, she said, Lord, please help me. My child is being thrown down, demonized, tortured, and he and and he didn't say anything and the disciples were like leave him alone <laughs> you know and Jesus said this is deliverance is the children's bread it's for the Israelites I came for the Israelites and she said Lord even he said should the master show 
throw the children's food to the dogs under the table. Okay, now a lot of people think they know what Jesus would say or Jesus would do. But this is what Jesus said. That deliverance was for his children. And the lady said, Lord, even the dogs eat the crumbs from underneath the master's table. And um, he said, whoa, <laughs> you have such great faith. And the daughter was delivered, healed, touched um, from that point forward because of this woman's faith. So if Jesus is saying that deliverance is for the children, for his children, then that's what it means. Because you could cast out spirits out of somebody who's not saved, doesn't know the Lord. And the thing is, if you don't, there's another scripture, and I'm sorry, I don't remember where it is. That says, if you cast a spirit out and you don't fill that place up, you know, it gets, the house gets sweet clean and that spirit goes and gets seven more and you're worse off than you are before. And so here's the thing. Let me just tell you about the thing about deliverance for the Christian. A lot of Christians are battling demons and they keep coming back and they're not getting deliverance and they're wondering why they're pressed. But the Bible says it doesn't, a lot of people say resist the devil. Well, the first part of the verse is submit yourself to God, resist the devil and he will flee. So you cannot just resist the devil and expect to get deliverance from your demons. You have to submit yourself to God because it is in submission to God that you are under the umbrella of his protection. It is in submission to God that he's going to lead you on the path of life and show you the way. And this is like a demon infested world. So you have to submit yourself to God so he can show you don't go here, don't connect there, don't watch this, like don't do that, you know, commit yourself here, so here. And when you are submitting yourself to God, not just doing good works, because you can do good works out of wrong motives, which essentially any, any good works that you're doing that God has not, the Holy Spirit hasn't prompted you to do, if it's not a good work that God created in advance for you to do, you might feel better, but it's not going to protect you it's not going to bring you into that place of protection. It's getting really cold out here. I'm still shaking. I'm just shaking. The power of God just felt so strong. <laughs> but I want to pray for y'all. Let me, let me just move about for a minute. Jesus. Lord God, I just pray in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. That we would commit ourselves make a decision today to submit ourselves to move by your spirit to walk in your word to commit ourselves see here's the thing god's life is an exchange for our life he has given his life for us and he has laid down his life for us. And then he has said, go and lay down your life. And you cannot enter the kingdom without being reborn. Which means you have to die to your old life. To the common sense life. To the do what I want life. And re be reborn as a new creature in Christ. Salvation is the first step. You have to be reborn. And then you have to die daily. The Bible talks about dying daily. That means you can't always do what you want. You can't always go where you want. You can't always be with who you want to be with in your flesh. But the, the more you walk with the Lord, the more you realize everything that he wants for you is actually what you really want. It's actually what you really want. Because he created you for a purpose. And he knows exactly. He knows exactly where you are going to be the most satisfied. But the problem is it's the, it the salvation comes without cost but you ha it, it it costs you the lower life to get the higher life so you're not paying for god to do things for you or anything like that but he showed us the way and he said pick up your cross and follow me and we don't hear enough about that that means you might have to do some things that are harder. You might have to do without some things so that you can give to somebody else. You can't just live to satisfy yourself and expect to be free. Because <laughs> that's the way 
the father of lies wants us to live. That's the way, that's the way people get into bondage when they just do whatever they want. Oh, I got that key. So cool. Lord, we ask you to help us because we want to. Everybody who's a believer, everybody in the sound of my voice who has asked Jesus to be Lord of their life in the deep part, deepest part of ourselves, we truly want to live for him. We want to live fruitful lives. We want to see um, fruitfulness come out of our lives. We want to see people come to the Lord and, and people get delivered. And we want to see multiplication in our lives. We want to flourish and we want to bloom and we want to glorify God. And that is what we want. But Lord, we do not have the ability or the capability to even move ourselves in that direction. All we can do is say, Lord, in us, whatever you can do, I surrender. I give you permission to, to rip it up, tear it up, throw it away, let it go, move forward, stay back. I, I give you permission, Lord, to speak to me, give me ears to hear you, and then help me to do what you are asking me to do. Give me the desire to do what you want me to do. Lord, rem search my heart and see if there's any unclean way in me. And lead me in the path of righteousness for your name's sake. And give me a pure heart and clean hands, Lord. And we just plead the blood of Jesus over every mistake, every past mistake, every present weakness. And we don't, we don't come with all that we can do for you, Lord, we know that all we can do for you is surrender our lives and allow you to use us as vessels because we are your temple and we are your people and we are your sheep here in the earth and we are your ambassadors. And Lord, you want us to walk in great power and the enemy wants to drain us of our power. He wants us to be constantly in spiritual warfare when really what we need to do is submit ourselves to you and the devil then resist the devil and he will flee help us to make the hard cuts you know sometimes god knows exactly what our weakness is he knows what we love he knows what we hang on to and he let me just tell you because you might be struggling with something he might ask you to do something extreme and it might be forever and it might be for a little bit but don't fear the extreme ask of God because on the other side of the biggest step of faith you ever take and of obedience is an impartation of grace to walk it out like if you make the decision if you make the decision I'm gonna commit I'm gonna let this go I'm gonna stop this I'm gonna whatever it is or is keeping me from you all the things in my life that are muddying the waters lord i need you to strengthen me and i and i need you to empower me to see the people around me and care about them the way that you do i need you to help me it, listen you can war and war and war and war and war with things or you could begin to go about thinking about other people's needs and meeting them and i'm telling you so much more natural the way that God made us because this is what Jesus did. He was a man on a mission. Y'all listen in if you're not in service somewhere tomorrow because the next two weeks I'm going to be doing a little bit different with the Easter message and Palm Sunday and just really thinking about who Jesus is in the midst of this story of, um, you know, Easter week, resurrection week from Palm Sunday on and just he was a man on, on a mission and he accomplished what he was sent to accomplish. I don't know about you, but I, a little late in the game. <laughs> and so I need God to multiply the years that I have left because there's a lot of work to be done and there's a lot of, um, really there's a lot of there's just a really ripe harvest and the harvest is plentiful, 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 but the workers are few and we've got to get ourselves off of our mind. And I know it's hard when you're suffering and you're going through your own struggles. And the last thing you think that you can do is go be there for somebody else. But I'm telling you, that is the way out. That is the way out. 
and you can show up with your messed up mind and your messed up emotions and just keep showing up and doing what God's asking you to do in the midst of your weakness, in the midst of your confusion, in the midst of your depression, in the midst of your brokenness. And God's putting us back together this way. Because that is when we are functioning the way that we were created to function. And our dysfunction unravels itself this way. I've been walking this out for a while. And I'm still a little dysfunctional. <laughs> but if we wait till we're completely functional to lock in and start trying to function properly, it's just not going to happen. I love you guys. I should probably tell my husband. <laughs> used to it events love you love you brother